the lyrics to this song, and I don't know much about it, so I just, just don't say it, but like, just even getting to that line where it talks about how life is quite absurd and death's the final word, always got to face the turbulent bow, it seems like it's advocating more for just uh, optimism in yourself or your circumstance rather than faith in something else, something greater. Hmm. In the process of remembering my password when you said that, but I had to put it, record it, and put it on the side. The side, you know. I learned how to do that for sixteen years, nine months, and three days. That was my job. Hear something and then be able to reproduce it in some way. first quiz question, which I find absolutely fascinating, and worry whether it's politically correct enough to use in class, of course, because officially I'm not allowed to be woke, apparently, if that makes sense. For a while I thought, you know, I'm woke, yeah, I'm good, and then someone pointed out to me, no, you can't be because you're not of the right race to be woke by a particular definition, the people that were being woke were the ones who were of the subjected or, you know, race and were being woke to the fact of how the system oppresses them. And me being officially not of that race, I therefore couldn't be woke. I thought it was, I was rather disappointed. I thought it was just relating to awareness, not how you have to be that's, I think, aware. initially how it came out. Um, there's, there's an author who I highly appreciate, whose name is um, John. Uh, um, let's see, it's early in the morning. I've had a cup of coffee, but it was a while ago. Uh, but in any case, he's from New York, uh, Columbia University, and he's a linguist, John McWhorter. John McWhorter. I'll show you who John McWhorter is. And woke. Woke, woke Racism was the title of one of his books. And what he points out is that, well, he's a linguist. Words change meaning over time. And so even in a very short period of time, the word woke was created, meant something, transformed itself, transformed itself, maybe transformed itself, you know, plus there's different individuals in different contexts, et cetera, et cetera. So it becomes very complex. But he's the one that I'm listening to when I'm thinking uh, how it's changed. Not how I'm not supposed to be woke because I'm the wrong color, uh, but um, that was a particular individual who was the right color, who was telling people who thought that they could be woke, even though they weren't the right color, that they were wrong for thinking that. A little bit miffed. It's almost like, you know, when we were feminists, we were all feminists, and people would say, you can't be a feminist because you're a male. And I am, actually, you know, that's how that worked. Um, so I don't know, but John McWhorter, He's very cool. Highly recommend him if you're. But but back to um, the quiz question. I mean, it's it's um, piggybacking on the Euthyphro, which we've talked about, you know, and that question that Socrates poses to Euthyphro. 
that Euthyphro can't answer. Uh, at least one of you replied, well, it could be both. It could be that uh, uh, the gods love the pious because it's pious, and the pious is pious because the gods love it. Why not? Why couldn't it be both? I don't see a conflict. It probably could be. Right? Um, but the goal of Socrates is clearly to think for yourself. Use what? How, what kind of explanation do you use in order to know what the right way of life is, and how to be pious, right? Um, so I updated it boldly. I watch Star Trek, you know. Uh, so I asked the question, if Jesus came to your door, you know, this is, this is Euthyphro in disguise, basically, uh, telling you what the gods find pious. Sell everything you have, give the uh, money to the, the poor, and then come follow me. Uh, the neat thing about that is if you read, uh, I, I'm not sure which or, or which Gospels that was in, um, but that does seem to be uh, one of the things that Jesus actually said to people. I especially remember the rich man who said, what can I do, etc. And Jesus said, sell everything you have, give the money to the poor, and come follow me. And the man got sad because he knew he couldn't do that, and he left, right? But in a way, that's what the apostles all were required to do, basically. Maybe. I don't know. No. Um, and that's how it was interpreted, and still is interpreted by many, uh, as the proper way to lead a pious life. And that's why different institutions were created you know, monasteries, convents, places where a person could basically take a, a make a vow of poverty. You know, that's you know the Augustinian rule. The Jesuits do that. Uh, the Dominicans do that. I mean, you know, if you look at the whole point of of those different uh, uh, monastery uh, uh, organizations, um, is for you to give up attachment to the physical world, right? Um, and basically become a minimalist, you know, just, just live off the absolute basis, right? Uh, and and in, in studying like um, St. Francis of Assisi, um, you know, that, you know, there's movies out there that, that are, are absolutely uh, appealing to people when I, in my age group when I was a kid there was um, Franco Zifferelli also did Romeo and Juliet, Taming of the Shrew. Currently, does much of the decorations for the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. Remember, we were hippies back then. This was us, you know. Ah, oh, yes, we get it. That's Claire. I think you're mad before. 
Love the geese. The geese are all singing along too. Sam. <laughs> yeah, well, the geese sing along too, it's funny. I and my wife loved when we were um, in college. That's when that came out, and uh, and we thought, you know, that's that's the hippie idea. You know, all this consumerism is just absolutely bad, not just for the world, but for you, right? You know, so you, you give that all up somehow. Um, go ahead, Edmund. So is this first question? Emmett. 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 Oh. Emmett? No, Brendan. Yeah, yeah. Um, so is this the first quiz question Wednesday? Um, where are you posting this? Because uh, I tried checking like the content on like, Blackboard and all that. And this is on Blackboard on content under notes for lectures three and four. So this is the fourth lecture. So okay, I guess I can answer the first question on is this this Wednesday or last Wednesday? Last Wednesday. Oh, uh oh. No, no, uh oh. Just do it later. No, I guess I did. Also, can I, can I answer it on this Monday then? Because I didn't answer it. Sure. No but I have another one that I'll ask today. This is, this, you know, the second quiz question will be today's quiz question. But what I, I wanted to do a little bit with was, was um, you know, how when you actually read about the actual St. Francis. I mean, he did a whole lot of stuff. He went on the Crusades, met with emissaries from the Sultan or whatever, that, that, you know, the Mahdi, whatever he was, you know, and, and, uh, and brought back uh, some Islamic uh, stuff. The, the prayer of St. Francis is actually based on an Islamic uh, set of precepts. Um, hmm. In any case, uh, he himself starved himself, beat himself, just absolutely tormented the heck out of his own body because he took it to the nth degree, the idea that the body is corrupt and evil and the soul, which is not the body, totally separate, is the good part of us and the body in its evil attraction to other physical things like food and sex and softness I don't know what what bodies are attracted to but in any case we have to get rid of all of that attraction and instead just focus on 
the soul. And so you beat the body, right? You know, the, the, the whole idea of uh, um, spare the rod, spoil the child. You've heard that expression? Where does that come from? Beat your child or you're spoiling the child because it'll grow up liking pleasures which are corrupting and evil. 